Now let's study the common emitter amplifier, which is the most widely used of all BJT amplifier circuits. So far we had been looking at conceptual circuits and now you have a real circuit in front of you. Notice that you have three capacitors included, CC1, CC2 and CE. CC1 and CC2 are coupling capacitors and CE is called a bypass capacitor. We are not going to concern ourselves with what they do just now, but we will do so later in the module. However, if you wish to gain more insight into them, a link is provided in the instructor's notes to a similar lesson in the MOSFET module. Now, our job is to find all the relevant quantities of this amplifier, that is, we find their accurate expressions. This will help us make a better design of the amplifier to suit our needs. Now let's draw its small signal model. Here we are. We have shortened VCC and VEE. We have opened the current source I. And the capacitors CC1, CC2 and CE act as perfect short circuits. This is of course an assumption. Now we have included the resistance R0 which arises because of the early effect. However, you can notice that RC and RL are both in parallel. This is because when we short VCC and when CC2 is shorted, then both terminals of RC and RL are connected to each other. That is why they are in parallel. Also with arrows, I have denoted three quantities, R in, R I B and R out. R in and R out are important characteristics of an amplifier and R I B is going to help us in our calculations. So let's start. R in is equal to R B parallel with R I B. And since R I B is only R pi, R in comes out to be R B parallel with R pi. Now usually R B is much larger than R pi. This denotes that R in equals R pi. This is a very small input resistance. Anyhow, let's move ahead. Vi is a fraction of the voltage Vsig appearing across the input side of the amplifier. So we can write a voltage divided equation for it. Substituting the value of Rn gives us this expression. Now notice that Vpi equals Vi. This is because Rb and Rpi are in parallel. We can write an expression for V0. This is minus Gm Vpi multiplied by the parallel combination of R0, RC and RL, that is their effective resistance. Now why the negative sign? This is because the current I0 is opposite in direction to Gm Vpi. Now substituting Vpi with Vi, we can find the voltage gain. Here you go. Now let's find out R out. It is simply RC parallel with R0. Now, usually R0 is much larger than RC, so R out comes out to be simply RC. Now, one more quantity I want to bring your attention to. This is GV, the overall voltage gain. This basically connects V0 with V sig. Finding it out is very simple. All you have to do is multiply this quantity, VI over V sig, with the voltage gain. So let me erase some of this and write its value. Here you go. Now notice that multiplying Gm with R pi gives us beta. However, if we have R sig greater than R pi, the overall gain will be highly dependent on beta. This is highly undesirable since beta varies considerably between units of the same transistor type. However, if you select R sig to be much smaller than R pi, we find that the overall voltage gain has become independent of beta. It is also now almost equal to the amplifier voltage gain.